Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We are live on this Friday night. We have a very special guest with us tonight, Barry Nussbaum. He uh, actually made a trip to Israel. And with everything that's going on in Israel right now, with all the rockets and the destruction and the fighting, uh, this is a perfect time to bring this gentleman on to talk about it. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining me. This is your second time being with me. That's true. Good to yeah. be with you, Will. Yeah. So where, where are you currently located? Uh, we don't talk about where our location from. America well, what country product. per se? We're what in country? The, we're in the United States. You are in the United States. So when was it that you uh, traveled to Israel? I was back in Israel uh, uh, early uh, in the year. We did uh, about 28 segments from various parts of Israel for American Truth Project, Will. We were up on the Golan Heights, on the Syrian border, at the Lebanese border. We traveled uh, all along the West Bank barrier. We were down in the Gaza Strip, where all the fighting is now. We were in the town of Starot, which is literally uh, a few seconds missile launch trip time from the Gaza Strip. And we actually went right up to the fence at the Gaza border, believe it or not. Uh, and fortunately, I'm here to talk about it. And no one took a shot at me. Wow, that's very nice. Very nice. So what do you think? So before we get started, so everyone that's just joining us, we are live on Facebook, YouTube and Periscope. Please share, please share. Um, we have a lot to talk about tonight. Um, so when you were in Israel, it was completely peaceful. You were on, and you say you were on the Gaza Strip even. Oh yeah, we, we have a lot of connections with the Israeli government and the Israeli military. Um, on the Golan border, I had a major that took us around um, in uh, the southern border at Gaza. Uh, we had a number of tours with um, active generals in the Israeli Defense Force and a good friend of mine who's a major in the home Southern uh, oh. Command, which is the Southern region of Israel Defense Force, uh, took us right up to and we patrolled all along the Gaza border in the fields where the tunnels are, um, at the fence places that have been cut recently where they're shooting the fire bombs will over the fence in the tire burning is going on and they're launching missiles. Uh, that's where we were and that's where we filmed. And I think uh, some of that video, your viewers might be able to see through your uh, show when it was peaceful and it doesn't look like that today a few months later. Wow. Very interesting, very interesting. So what do you know what was the, uh, what sparked off this last episode of them shooting the rockets and I, I think i read a report to where it was something where they were talking about like 500 rockets that they were trying to shoot at israel and well, they did they yeah did really i mean yeah so and you know what thank god israel has the the missile defense system that they have in place because they would just decimate the 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 the, the whole country if it, you know if they didn't have it so what was what was it that sparked off this last episode of them shooting rockets you know, it's very hard as rational Americans sitting there and having a discussion in our country, Will, to, to creep into the mind of um, apocalyptic, crazy people. And that's literally what the leadership of Hamas is. Sometimes um, incidents are provoked by literally nothing, such as the riotous invasion force at the, at the uh, fence at Gaza. Uh, it just happens, they organize it and they do it. The missiles of the past week, there were almost 500 launched 100% against civilian targets, towns occupied with men, women and children, no military targets, all civilian targets, because it's intended to terrorize. So, and they're still shooting these rockets. So I've heard before, so I'm assuming that they're still shooting these rockets from mosques, from uh, children hospitals, um, mm -hmm. from places to where if the Israelis retaliate that they'll end up killing children stop to stop these rockets from coming at them just so then they can parade the dead bodies of these children just to say, look what Israel's doing to us. When they're the ones shooting the rockets, they don't even have to shoot the rockets and then no one would die. Yeah, it's really a crazy thing. And 
it, this is really bizarre. One of the uh, intelligence officers that had briefed me on my last trip uh, will explain that when Israel, uh, the army crossed the border last time to try and root out the terrorists, all of the heads of Hamas were gathered in the basement of the main hospital that has the intensive care ward in Gaza, knowing Israel would never enter a hospital, nor would they enter a mosque, nor will they enter a school. So they hide behind men, women, children, and sick people, knowing that the Israeli army, which is probably the most humane army in the world, won't come after them. I'll give you an example. This just happened this week, in the last several days. 500 missiles almost were launched against civilian targets throughout Southern Israel. And I know the towns, I was there filming and interviewing people. Now these are families living more or less within a few hundred yards, and they have seconds. And I mean, one, two, three, four, five, bam, the missile hits. So if you're not within running distance of a bomb shelter, you'll probably be very badly hurt or killed if the missile lands near you. Hmm. So, so get this, these missiles get launched with the express intent to terrorize, with the express intent to cause pandemonium on the Israeli side of the border. The idea is that maybe Israel will capitulate and allow Hamas more freedom of trade. Now, freedom of trade, <laughs> this is so weird. You can go right to the border. There's a cement factory on the Israeli side that every day, a hundred trucks line up and they carry the cement paid for by the European Union into the Gaza Strip it's destined and supposed to be used to rebuild hospitals and schools and public housing and the power plant. And almost 90% of it, Will, gets diverted into these underground terror tunnels. So this past week, what did Israel do to retaliate? What I'm about to tell you is the God's honest truth. I urge your viewers to look it up online to prove what I'm telling you is the truth because what I'm about to say is so bizarre, nobody's gonna believe me. Get this, 500 missiles almost within two and a half days, pounding Southern Israel. Finally, the IDF has authorization to send the Air Force across the border and retaliate. Here's how Israel retaliated. They put people on the phones for 45 minutes. They called every single building they were planning to bomb. They told every single building they were planning to bomb, get out, we're gonna blow up that building. Then after 45 minutes, when they sent drones up and they looked empty, they had these knock-knock mortars, which is a very light explosive device they drop on the roof to make sure that everybody gets out. And then they blow up the buildings. Why, Will? So nobody gets hurt, they just cause physical destruction to buildings. Why? Because the European Union would condemn Israel for having a disproportional response to defending their citizenry. And that's what Israel did this week. They blew up a bunch of empty buildings in Gaza, and guess how many people were hurt on the Gaza side? None. None. Everybody got out. Yeah, I remember years ago that uh, Israel would drop leaflets telling people that we're getting ready to take out a certain location, a certain area. And I'm like, who does that? Who's nope. who's getting ready to tell their enemy that, hey, we're getting ready to blow up this location. You might want to leave and give them fair warning. Now, when they're trying to shoot these rockets at Israel, they're not giving Israel fair warning. They're just automatically start shooting them. Oh, so. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's it's pretty crazy. So when you were there in Israel, you because I, I read some of your I read your email where you were talking about how um, there was Israelis and Muslims living together. No one's fighting one another. And w so exactly give us a description exactly how, where the animosity is coming from and who is causing it from your perspective. Yeah, that's a, it's a really, really insightful question. Um, when you go up on the Golan Heights, which was captured in 1967 from Syria um, in a defensive war that Israel won and then recaptured again in 1973, the, the issue in the Golan Heights was 
the Syrian army used to lob shells down on the Sea of Galilee um, to the farmers down below, blowing up their farms, their crops, their animals, and the citizenry. So when Israel captured the Golan Heights, which literally is looking down on northern Israel and the Galilee, they said they'd never give it back. So I was up there, uh, like I said, with drove everywhere, hundreds of miles. Everybody lives together in peace. Muslims, Christians, uh, Jews, Druze, which is a sect of, uh, of Islam. And everybody gets along fine. And everyone's doing great economically. Syria wants the, the, the uh, territory back because they're very much about controlling territory. Now, if you looked at any of the video I sent, we went right up to the Syrian border where Al Qaeda was controlling one village and the Syrian army was controlling another village and they're shooting each other, they're gassing each other, they're con uh, conducting genocidal raids on each other. That video you're showing right now in the background, that is Syria. That's me at the fence shooting into Syria so you can see it. On the other side, it's a genocidal mess. So yeah, Israel has the only country in the Middle East where if you're a Christian, you can go to church and not be put to death. If you're a Jew, same thing. If you're a Druze, same thing. If you're a Muslim, same thing. And they all have citizenship. They all get to vote. They all are involved in democracy and they all have equal rights. It's the only country of its kind. And yet, just today, Will, nine UN resolutions were introduced to the General Assembly's approval, all condemning Israel for things like racism and bizarre charges. And as they explored human rights around the world, and all the countries in the world, I mean all of them that are conducting wars and killing their people and enslaving people and gassing their people and mass starvation, do you know how many resolutions were introduced in total for the whole world for all the countries like North Korea and China, where all the human rights violations are going on, the answer is zero. And nine were introduced condemning Israel. It's shocking. Wow. You know, it's, 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 it's like it's biblical. 